So in today's video, we're going to discuss our high S's. We're going to give you six descriptive words to describe high S's and one watch word or a word we have to be mindful of when they exhibit this behavior. They're probably under stress. We'll go into the things that S's like as well as how to best motivate an S if you have a son or daughter who's an S or maybe in a work situation. S's are supportive. They'll give you the shirt off their back. They'll give you their pants, their shoes, whatever, anything they can do to help you. They are super helpful people. Now, we've said in this series before that everyone is a unique blend of all four of these traits. Well, I am an IS, so I'm 100 on the scale of an I. I'm a 92 on the S scale. So I love people, love having fun, but I also love supporting people. That's one of the reasons why we're making these videos, to help you guys improve your relationships. And I'm the guy who's, or you've probably seen someone like on a plane or whatever, who goes out of their way to help the old ladies with their, get their bags in the overhead compartments or what have you. In fact, if I've just met someone on a plane and we're having a conversation and I'm a couple sections ahead of them, I'll wait until they're off of the plane and then we'll walk back together. If it's a young lady and she's walking back to her car by herself, I wanna make sure that, hey, if you got somebody waiting on you, is there a security guard who can kind of walk you to your car to make sure you're taken care of? So as S's, we're going to be supportive of others, making sure we're helpful any way and every way we can in pretty much every situation. S's are steady, super steady, and it's such a beautiful characteristic. They're never too high and they're never too low. They just kind of stay right in the middle and it's wonderful. So there's not a lot of drama when it comes to S's and that's great for an organization. They are the glue of every organization out there because they know how to, to listen to people. They know how to prevent conflict from happening. They just want to love on people and help people in any way that they can. So it's a beautiful quality. Just steady as you go. S's are sincere. They care fiercely about friends and family. They are very, very kind. I remember growing up, I had just begun to, to drive as a 16 year old in North Carolina. And I was on my way back home from my friend Michael's house. And I was coming back down Lee Avenue. I'll never forget it. I'm driving down the road, big oak tree, and all of a sudden, squirrel scampers down the oak tree right out in the road. Oh no. I felt a bump bump in my wheel. I stopped to pull over to the side of the road, and there's a little squirrel. He's out there just limp in the road. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just hit a squirrel. This is so sad. So I immediately get out of the car. I grab my sunshade, because remember, all squirrels have a race, so don't touch the squirrel. But I took my sunshade, and I'm, I scared scoop up the little squirrel off of the road, kind of like a spatula, and I carefully dump him into the floorboard of my car. Instantly turn on like the bat signal, and all these lights and speed down to my, my buddy who I played golf with as a veterinarian, Dr. Ernest Forbes, who's passed away now. But Dr. Forbes got down and I was like, Dr. Forbes, Dr. Forbes, I, I've got a squirrel, he's, he's hurt, I don't know how bad or whatever, I just ran over in the car. I said, hey, dude, you gotta calm down, Alex, tell me what happened. So I explained the story to him, and then he said, John, why don't you go check it out? Now, John was his veterinary assistant. John is about 6'4 and about 290. This dude is massive. So I'm driving this little tiny 1984 Pontiac Fiero. If you've never seen a Pontiac Fiero, it's a small little sports car, two doors, a fire trap. It's just, it's awful, but it's a teeny little tiny car. So John, the veterinary assistant, comes outside. He looks in, in the, the side glass through my window and sees a squirrel on the floor. He goes, I'll take care of it in a nice, slow, southern voice. He said, you just stay out there. He puts on his gloves, gets in the car. About that time, the little squirrel, who I had then named Sammy, um, was starting to rouse a little bit. So John reached down on the ground to try to grab Sammy, and Sammy perked up all of a sudden, and Sammy starts jumping around the car, and John's trying to grab him, and Sammy's landing on John's head, and, and the whole car is shaking back and forth because John's this huge human being, and it's going crazy. And all of a sudden, finally grabbed him, brings him inside, and then I'm like, okay, is he okay, is he okay? Well, obviously he was okay enough to be trying to bite through John's hands with his gloves and everything. It was a crazy time. So we got back into the office and the, Dr. Forbes takes a look at him. He said, oh, I think he's gonna be just fine. Gave him a shot of penicillin, put him out in the backyard, Sammy runs up a tree. Now all that to say that as a high S, you know, we're sincere, we're kind, we care deeply about anything and everything that we find purpose and value in. So in that particular moment, I didn't want that squirrel to die because of me. And so I was gonna do anything and everything I could to take care of that squirrel. And then, you know, 
picked him up, scooping him up. I mean, who does that? I mean, most people are just going to keep on going down the road. Boom, boom. It's just another speed bump and you keep on going. Not S's. S's care. And don't take that caring for granted. S's are sentimental. Yeah, if you check out my LinkedIn profile, it will say CEO, award-winning speaker, author, cheesy 80s love song guru. That's in my, that's in my profile because I'm always listening to, to 80s love songs. I can give you an example of when sentimentality comes into play when you're in that kind of a father-daughter situation. So if you've never seen the movie Tangled by Disney, I recommend you go see that. It's about Rapunzel, you know, the lady who lived in the tower, the long hair. So during that movie, there's really only one place in that movie where you could cry, okay? But I found multiple places <laughs> to cry in that movie. Um, and one of them was where you wouldn't expect. So Rapunzel has met this young man named Flynn Rider, and he wants to trade her an object in, for the chance for Rapunzel to go out. And all she's ever wanted to do is get out of that tower and see these lanterns that rise up on the anniversary of the princess's birth. So they start to get a little bit of crush on one another. And I'm watching this movie in the theater with my 15-year-old daughter who was like uh, maybe 12 or 13 at the time. And so they get out on this boat and all of a sudden the lanterns are going up in the sky. And then Mandy Moore comes on and says, And at last I see the light. And, you know, Rapunzel's falling in love with this young man and, and my daughter's going to get a boyfriend one day and get married and have kids. And I'm going to be a granddad one day. And so I'm tearing up. And then, of course, my daughter, who's a high C, says, Dad, get a hold of yourself. And so I'm, yes, ma'am. And so I wipe, quickly wipe the tears away. And I know it's a very emotional time for me because my little daughter's going to get married one day. So I take my man card and I hand it to the attendant on the way out because I'm never going to get that back. But I did share an experience with my daughter, which we still laugh about today, and that was to show her that I care. I care deeply about her. And so that sentimentality is very, very important for S's. And if we equate that into the, to the real world, let's say the business world, if you will, if we, we can equate sentimentality to empathy. Empathy, understanding where others are coming from, understanding that others have problems, questions, concerns, pain points in their lives. If we don't take the time in any relationship, be it business or personal, to understand and try to empathize with folks, understand where they're coming from, and everyone has problems and everyone has things that they're dealing with, if we don't have empathy, we're gonna miss the boat to make really, really deep and meaningful relationships in our lives. S is our status quo, status quo. They don't like things to change very much. And in my business world, I use a Pilot G205 pen. I'm not, I don't get sponsored by this. Although Pilot, if you want to sponsor you know, my channel, that's fine. Um, but I use the Pilot G205 pen. Why? Because it works. And this is all that I use. When my supply coordinator orders things, she doesn't order me big this or this kind of fountain pen or whatever else, because I know this works. And so in, the, in S's life, they don't want to change. They don't like change. D's, we've already talked about them, Okay, you can go up here to a link and see uh, those folks. D's love change. They're all about it. They have to move and shift all the time. But S's, oh man, if you move their furniture on them, you need to tell them like six weeks ahead of time because oh, that causes panic for them. Take your time with your S's. Know that they're status quo. They don't like to change the paint on their walls. They don't like to change the kind of car they drive or the tires they put on it. They don't like to change the kind of outfits they wear. And in the business world, they certainly don't like new initiatives and things like that. They like things to stay the same. And if it's not broken, don't try to change things because they like things the way they are. They would really be struggling right now during this video. I'm, I'm just, stay right there. I'm, I'm just, I'm done. Don't, don't, don't follow me. I really don't want to finish this video right now, but I'm going to, even though I'm a little shy. So S's are shy. Now, wait a minute, Alex. You said you were an S blend too, right? Well, and that's true. I'm an IS. I'm 100 on the I scale. My S is a 92. And so from that perspective, when I look back through this list of words like sentimental and steady and supportive and all those things, I'm going to have the majority of those as part of who I am for my personality style. But there are a couple of those words that don't apply to me from this S group because my I is so strong. And for me, those are the words steady and shy. I am not steady. I'm either woohoo or <laughs> in terms of being all over the place. But then from that shy perspective, I, mean, I just sang Mandy Moore very badly, <laughs> in fact. And so I'm doing that to how many ever people out there on YouTube are going to watch that. And so I don't have a problem with that. I'm not shy. So from that perspective, remember, we're all a unique blend of all four of these personality traits. And if you really want to know how, you know, how well you are at one or how more intense you are at one, then you need to take an assessment for that. But let's talk about motivators. Motivators 
are extremely important for S's because they are extrinsically motivated. Let's show you why. Before we move on to our motivators, I got to give you my, my watchword. Okay. And my watchword is that sometimes S's can be a sucker. We are the timeshare salesman's best friend. I mean, we're going to go out there. We're going to say, we're going to take this little three-day vacation. We're not going in that room with that sales guy. I don't care what he says. And the first thing that happens is, you're here for the sales presentation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so they go sit down. You want a timeshare? That's the best thing ever. And you're going to hit with all this high eye mentality. You're like, oh. So your answer is yes, correct? And you have to put like duct tape on your mouth to not say no, because the hardest word in the English language for a high S is no. We can't say no to people. We want to say yes to everyone. So if you have high S children, they're going to want to say yes to you. They're going to want to please you all the time. But they may be trying to please their teachers too and their friends as well along the way. And so that's a struggle for them. In the, in the work world, if you're a high S and you say yes to everything, then if you've got multiple people you're reporting to, your managers are going to struggle with, hmm, how are they prioritizing? And that's on the managers. It's up to them to help you succeed because they shouldn't be putting too many things on your plate knowing that you're going to be the person that's always going to say yes. So say yes, that's fine. Just do it less often. And you do have to adapt your style a little bit and start to say that N-O word a little more frequently to get back your sanity. Because otherwise, that's going to be the look on your face more times than not. So those are our words to describe high S's. Now let's talk about what S's like. And the first thing they like is to be accepted. S's love to be accepted. And here's a little nugget for you. High S's are the style most susceptible to peer pressure, both the positive and the negative peer pressure but they are the most susceptible. So if you're raising high S children, you need to do a good job of what you want them to have from a morals perspective and a values perspective so they know this is my center, this is my focus, I'm not gonna be persuaded to do this or persuaded to do that because as they grow from those elementary school to middle school and high school, their peers are gonna have much, much more influence on them and they're going to be persuaded to do things if they're not really, really focused on that. S is love teamwork and cooperation. This next concept is a little bit difficult for a C and a D to understand, but here it is. For S's, it's all about the we, not the me. It's all about the we, not the me. It's not my own wants and dreams and desires, it's about ours. So as a family unit, I'm not concerned necessarily about me having a good time on that family trip, but did the kids and my wife have a good time? That's important to me, because if they're happy, then I'm happy. And so I use the term happy wife, happy life a lot. And some people get, you know, say, you shouldn't be saying that or whatever, for whatever reason. But for me, it's true. Because as a high S, I want my wife to be happy. And so when it comes to ordering food or choosing restaurants, I really don't have a preference. But a lot of times I'll say, I don't care. She'll say, what do you want to eat? I don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I don't have a preference. Or rather, I would rather my wife decide because I know if she chooses, She'll be happy, and therefore, if she's happy, then I'm happy, because I'm pretty much gonna get anything on the menu. So S's are flexible like that. S is like sticking with what works, okay? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't change their, the pants that you buy for them, okay? If you're shopping for a spouse, don't change the color of their you know, paint on the walls. Just leave them in their space. The monotony of sameness is comforting for those reserve types, those S's and C's. So for those S's, and for me, I wear the same, pretty much the same pants when I travel, the same shirts when I speak, pretty much all the time because there's comfort in that versus a high I who primarily or high D has a certain way they dress, high I's change a lot, high D's power suit and power tie, those kinds of things. But for S's, that sameness is really comforting. S's are all about harmony. They're all about harmony, peace in the family, peace at work, peace in whatever organization they're a part of. And so a lot of times you will see selfless not selfish, but selfless acts by high S's. What does that look like? Well, send out a survey. What do you guys want as a team if we hit our goals for this month? Well, the S is not gonna be very strong in terms of this is what I want, this is what I want. They're gonna be like, what do you guys think? Oh, that sounds good. And it really doesn't matter to them, again, because again, they're going to bend to the will of the group versus having that really forceful, individualized wants and needs and desires. So they're all about harmony, trying to make peace. Two people start fighting. Erp. Let's back up and let's make peace and let's move on so we're all happy together. And then again, S's are about sameness. We talked about steady and not liking things to change very much and more of that status quo mentality. If you think about it from a perspective of, let's say you're buying a house. A high S wants in their new house as much as they have in terms of characteristics of their old house. So if the washer and dryer were upstairs in their old house, they would like to have it 
up there in the new house. Now, it might not make much sense because the schematics might not be the same in the new house versus the old house, but from that period of sameness and that idea of I've got to have comfort in, it's got to be a lot like what we had. Like I've got to be in a cul-de-sac because my last one was in a cul-de-sac. It's got to have five bedrooms because this had five bedrooms. There's a lot of value for them in sameness. So motivators for high S's, it's appreciation. In our last video about eyes, we talked about how recognition was so important to them. Very public, very in your face, lots of applause, all the focus is on them. S's are not that way. They're all about appreciation. So let me model how that looks for you. Sally, you just, you're such a huge part of what we do here as a team. Love that your sales goals have been going up and up. Your growth in your, in your department's been phenomenal. Just want to say thank you so much for what you do for, for here at us at uh, Acme Incorporated. Here's a little note just to say thank you. You're awesome. Just keep up doing what you're doing. Now this is done in a very personal way and you see how my tone of voice is very quiet. Notice there's no crowds clapping or anything else like that. This is a one-to-one. -one. In fact, I probably will be sitting down and even as much as put a hand on her shoulder to indicate you know, that personal touch. S's embrace that personal space, they're thinking and they're thinking, then you put a hand on their shoulder like, oh, that touch immediately gets that engagement from them. So when you engage them in a very soft, subtle way, and then you give them a thank you note, that thank you note means the world to them. They're gonna open up, they're gonna read it, they're gonna say, oh, Sally, you did such a great job, you're such a wonderful part of this team, uh, your contributions have just gone da 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 da. They're gonna be like, oh, he actually cares. This is super. And so they're gonna pin that on their wall. They're gonna read it every couple weeks. It's just gonna be phenomenal. So that's appreciation for S's. Now let's go back to our high I video and let's put an S in the role that we have for an I. We have the S in the front of the room. Everyone's clapping and cheering. Woo, you did such a great job. Spotlight's on you. And the S is gonna be up here going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And they're never going to be as intense about doing whatever they wanted to be doing for that particular recognition because they don't want the limelight. They don't want the spotlight. They're looking to go, I'm, I'm done, 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 I'm done. And they're walking away as fast as they can because they don't want, they don't want any part of that. In fact, they're probably gonna pack their box and leave their company. They're never gonna come back there again because they don't want the attention. So what you're doing is you're actually encouraging negative behaviors instead of positive behaviors when you're trying to motivate an S in that way. So you can't motivate people the same way depending on their style. You have to adapt your behavior. You know yourself, understand others, and then adapt. Now let's take that letter for example. We gave that high S, that, that note they pinned it up on their cork board and everything was great. A high D is going to read that note and go, Sally, you're a rock star. Da -da -da -da. Well, yes, yes I am. Yes I am. Okay. Well, you're not telling me anything I don't know. They're going to rip it up, throw it in the trash, and move on with their lives because they're intrinsically motivated. I's and C's are motivated by themselves. I's and S's are going to be motivated by others. So D's and C's, intrinsic motivation. S's and I's, are extrinsic motivation. So an I is going to be motivated by that, that note. Hey Sally, great job, da da da. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But then they're going to be like saying, well, where's the gift card? <laughs> I mean, I got to buy some bling, right? So that's going to be a part of their motivation. The S, the pat on the back, and the note will stand on its own. The I's have to have a little bit more public recognition. Maybe give them some bling. D's and C's, totally self-motivated. S's, I love y'all, I'm one of you. So hopefully this has gotten you some perspective in terms of understanding yourself a little bit better. But if you have S's in your life that you'd like to know better, you need to make sure we can give them assessment. Or if you're learning more about yourself, take an assessment. It's gonna help transform the way you communicate, overcome obstacles when you're trying to deal with conflict and challenges in your relationships, understand your parents better, your spouse better, a significant other better. And in the workplace, this stuff works too. Click on the link below to get your assessment.